Almost midway through February and basketball season is heating up. It's time for another edition of Mark's Madness. Joined as always by Mark Shine. I'm Matt Finkel. Thank you for joining us and we've got a lot to talk about, Mark. We didn't get together last week due to signing day. Hope you enjoyed our sports report signing day special. Got to see where a lot of area athletes will be playing college sports, but Right now, let's talk some high school basketball, and let's get started in the MAC. I didn't realize it was signing day. I thought it was we had to recalibrate the iPad. Oh, well, that was actually the reason, and we just put together a signing day show in the <laughs> yeah. meantime for yeah. you. Just to cover up the fact the iPad was messed up. Right, okay. but we should be, we're going to break down some plays in a yep. little bit with the Telestrator and the iPad. It'll, it'll be fun. Let's start in the MAC, yep. though. St. Henry beat Minster last night to improve to 6-0 and in conference, but the big story was Ryan Mikesell returning. He missed a game against Salina over the weekend due to an ankle injury. Yeah, both he and Mitchell Stallman missed Saturday night's game uh, with injuries. They both were back and played last night. Mikesell had 20 plus points again, so he's obviously back in form. They had a nice win last night with Minster. That gets them caught up now as far as conference games, so they're back on schedule. Marion Local also beat DSJ over the weekend. and. Yep. And Marion Local's a, a team we've been watching for a while now, a team that we've had our eye on for the postseason. And, and the, so much good basketball in the MAC. St. Henry looks like they're going to have the league title wrapped up. But who do you see going the furthest? Well, that's a, a real challenge. And, of course, we've got our, our show coming up on Sunday night when we talk about the bracket sheets and how it all draws out. And matchups are so key and so important. But when you look at what Marion Local has done recently and giving up just, just 28 points to Delphi St. John's the other night, they're really solid defensively. They play a great schedule. they got a huge get, number of games coming up here this weekend. New Bremen, and Spencerville, and then Salina on Monday. So big schedule of games for, New, for the Marion Local Flyers coming up here in the next couple of days. We'll see how that plays out for them. As for the WBL, a lot of good teams there too that we're looking towards for the postseason. And Defiance right now is 5-1 in the league. Salina is 6-0. and So Salina remains in that driver's yep. seat. And Sh Salina has Shawnee, Kenton, and Elida left. Can any of those teams pull the upset? Well, the question is, can. Shawnee obviously has a couple of guards who can score, and when you can put points on the board, you're dangerous. That game is at Shawnee, so that gives them a little bit of emphasis. Certainly, you would think that Salina would be the favorite. And then Elida at home. Elida is an improving basketball team, but it's a home game, and with a league championship on the line, you just can't imagine Salina would lose that. My bet is they will run the table, but there's a couple of opportunities in there to lose games. A couple of tough non-league games coming up, though. Salina just beat St. Henry. They still have to play Marion Local. Yep. And then also LCC yep. coming up. So they'll be battle tested by the time the tournament rolls around. In the NWCC, uh, a league championship game of sorts coming up this weekend yep. when Perry takes on USV. They're both 6 0 in the league. Perry, though, Tuesday night had their 14 game winning streak snapped against Miller City. That was a really a surprise. Not that they lost to Miller City. It was a quality opponent. It was on the road. It's a Tuesday night game, and it doesn't have any bearing on conference play. But the way in which they lost by 20, and they scored just one point in the third quarter, and for as dynamic as their offense has been all year, scoring in the 70s and 80s on a frequent basis, for Miller City to hold them just one point in a single quarter, that's really kind of a key thing for them. Now, they did get Jared Poling back. Um, his wrist was just a bruise of some type, and as one of the uh, clowns out in, in Perry told me, hey, it's his left hand, he shoots with his right hand, what difference does it make? Well, it does make a difference, but he got back and he plays, so that's a good thing heading into the game this weekend. Perry head coach Matt Tabor will be one of several coaches us joining here on Sunday night. Mark, you already mentioned yep. it's Sunday night, 7 p.m., our bracket selection show. Looking forward to breaking down all of the brackets. And a little later on in Mark's Madness, we'll discuss some of the changes this year. It's a little bit different yep. format than in years past. It is. Well, let's continue on through the weekend. Well, I'm a senior, had its winning streak snapped last week, yep. but two good wins this week. Yeah, they did, and I think it's good for the Spartans to get back on the floor and to succeed like they did. And of course, they just jumped out on Van Wert, a little bit of an overmatched Van Wert team, and just really took it to them. So that was a big win for them. And of course, games coming up this weekend that will test them a little bit too. Great story in that game as well. Johnny Wilson, the team manager, plays and, and scores the, the place. He erupted. I yep. mean, well, I'm a senior. the game was never really in doubt for the Spartans. They got out to a 17-0 lead, and I think they led 19-2 after one. Yep. But Wilson coming in and really igniting that crowd, and it's a story that you like to see. Yeah, it's a good feel, good story. It's nice what Coach Simpson has done. You know, he keeps the young man around as a manager, and I'm sure the kid gets to shoot a lot in practice and just be a part of a very special basketball team that's going on. But then, of course, to take that and get on the floor and actually make a couple of three balls, what an exciting thing for him and what a positive thing for the Lima City program. 
Lima Senior takes on Defiance Saturday night. Yep. That should be a good one and, and a nice test for Lima Senior as they gear up for tournament play. And I, what I really think, and you mentioned tournament, Matt, I think that's a good point because they're going to see a team like that in the tournament. Somebody that's solid defensively, that takes care of the basketball, doesn't take bad shots like Defiance does. That'll be a real nice test because it'll be a little bit different from some of the teams that they played recently. Liberty Benton in the BBC is unbeaten in league, coming off a big win over Macomb, who was previously yes. unbeaten in the BBC. And in, in the Blanchard Valley Conference, a lot of games because you play everyone and right. it's an expanded conference now. But Liberty Benton in the driver's seat. They really are. Of course, they had a win over, what, Arcadia on Tuesday night this week. So that was a big win for them as well. I think the surprise thing was, was how easily they defeated Macomb. That game was never in doubt, and they won by 30-plus points. So that was a huge win for Liberty Benton. It's a team, if you looked at the, the, the rankings in the, the conference, the BVC, they don't rebound the basketball very well. But they're solid defensively, and their offense was obviously clicking last weekend. Putnam County League now, Collida, Miller City. This game is a game you can see this week on yep. WOSN. Again, we'll go through our broadcast schedule in just a bit. Some great games coming up. But Collida has really been great in the in-league play. Can they continue the, it this week? Well, they're going to have to because there's a tie with them and with Ottoville. And of course, Ottoville has a win over both of those schools, so that really put them in a good spot. Uh, difference in style this week. Miller City's an up and down. Let's get it and go. Let's get in transition. Let's shoot threes and make things happen. Where Kaleida would prefer to be a little bit more slow paced, a little bit more uh, discipline oriented in the half court. So which style wins out? Kaleida gave Wayne Trace a run for its money la uh, last weekend and it sent it to overtime. They ended up losing by one, but Wayne Trace is ranked third in, in yes. D4. So that was a, a good game for Kaleida. And I would think that bodes well for them as they match up with Miller City because it's a similar style. This is a uh, Wayne Trace team that really gets out. They shoot a lot of threes. They run a full court press defense, similar to what Miller City does, obviously with some very good talent, the Linders and a couple other guys. I get a chance to see them on Saturday night. Looking forward to seeing them again when they play Crestview. Yeah, that should be a good one. Mm -hmm. LCC continues to impress yep. as well, and, and they traveled to Michigan for yep. a game in which picked up a victory and then a, a win over Chaminade Julian right. last night, Tuesday night, at home. So they're, they're really making their rounds. They, they really are. Of course, Trey Cobbs and Dantes Walton leading them in scoring. But you know, was, I don't know whether people understand our community, how big that w win was over Kalamazoo City. That, uh, now, they number their schools backwards, so the big division of Michigan is four. That's a D4 team that won a state championship a couple years ago and was having a great season up there. That was a huge win to go on a road all the way to Kalamazoo City and beat them. And, of course, to come home against uh, Dayton Chaminade Julianne. That's another nice win with a D1 player down there at Chaminade Julianne. It's going to Wright State. It's a good win. Two good wins for LCC. Bit of a showcase, and, and these guys, Trey Cobbs, you mentioned, and Dantes Walton, yep. getting a lot of attention when you when you travel to play these types of games. Remember, they were at flying to the hoop early yep. in the year, too. So, exciting time for the T-Burns. Well, and of course, their season is predicated to the tournament. We know they don't get a chance to play in a league, which is unfortunate for them. So, their season is, how well can we play throughout the regular season and prepare us for the tournament? I understand there's still some concerns about Jake Williams' shoulder. We had a little bit of trouble with it last weekend. Played on Tuesday night, however. We'll see how that goes for him. All right, you ready, Mark? Let's give this Telestrator a shot. We're going to break down a couple plays, two games that you were at. Let's start with That's the St. Right. Mary's Defiance game. And in that game, you noticed some things going well, on offensively that we want to take a look yeah, at. We want to watch the point guard uh, for St. Mary's here and how well he handles the situation. Because right about here, he's going to make a real nice back cut. You see right here, he's set up. He's going to make a back cut right off this man right here. It's well-timed. The pass is perfect. And watch how they execute this play. Here's the pass right there, off the screen, right on time. That's Wilker, and he scored. I really like that young man and what he can do for his team. And on the other end, let's look at transition basketball here. This is a push by Defiance. Nice bounce pass under the arms, and Smitty finishes. We're going to look at it again a little bit in slow motion and just see how this whole thing develops for the Bulldogs. First, it's the rebound. Here's the push. And watch what happens right about here. Here's Smitty at the bottom of our screen. He's going to make this cut right here, and he is wide enough. He creates a proper angle to the basket and can score for them in transition. Here comes the bounce pass right there under Wilker's arms and the contact as well. That's an excellent fast break opportunity for them. And then Defiance is going to do something in their half court set. The pass goes to the free throw line based on out of bounds. He draws the defender, the bounce pass inside. That's Singleton to Singleton as the brothers combine to score here uh, for Defiance. And we're going to take a look at it again. Here he's going to draw the defender. Uh, this is Katwan Singleton. And when he draws the defender to him in the post, the defender makes this move right here. Here comes the bounce pass under the defender's arms, perfectly executed for them. 
and they get a layup out of it. Right underneath the defender's arm, we forget to bounce pass often, and we throw a chest pass in there, that gets stolen. Czar can't commit a foul because he's already in some foul situations. Great to see what was going on in that game. Now let's jump over to Lincoln View, and we're going to see a little defense here from Chandler Adams. Yeah, too often we don't spend enough time talking about defense, but this is the way you're supposed to take a charge. Here's Adams right here, and he's going to put his left foot on the baseline just like he's supposed to, except contact with his chest, and give it to fall backwards so it looks like there's a charge situation that occurs. He does this perfectly, and we can watch the charge right there. Chandler Adams is a nice player. I didn't realize that until I had a chance to see them the other night. We're going to catch him again here on this particular play. Watch how well they run the high-low pass. Number 11 comes up. The pass inside to Adams uses his body very well and goes and scores. This whole thing is perfectly executed from right here down. Here's Chandler Adams right here. He's got his left arm on the defender, and he's going to make sure he holds without shoving off. He's got his right hand up as a target, so he knows right where the pass is supposed to go. The pass is thrown high enough to get it to him, but not so high the defense has a chance to react inside. This is a very well executed play by Lincoln View, and I really like Chandler Adams. Results in two there. Now let's take a look at something St. John's did late in the game, trying to mount a comeback. Well, when you need a three, it's often hard to get one, but they run the double screen perfectly, and when they get the ball into Odenweller's hands, he comes off in just the right form. We're just going to let this roll through. Here's the first screen. Here's the second. When the defender doesn't step up and play, he gets his feet pointed towards the rim. His elevation is good, and he nails the shot. Great job, Mark. I can watch that for hours. I can watch you do that for hours because when I attend a game, you know, I got my camera on my shoulder and I'm trying to figure out how somebody got so open and now I got Mark to show me and you exactly what happened. That was good stuff. Well, I try to take notes as the game's going along and make a little note on the sideline of play we can use and we, we found some good ones this week. Yeah, and there'll be more to come yep. this week. Now let's turn our attention to the tournament draw yep. and let's just touch on a couple of the changes. What's different about well, this year? Matt, to try to explain this in kind of a brief manner, if you think about the fact that we used to have two sectionals that fed into a district, let's say there are 14 teams and two in each of those uh, brackets, so you have two seven-team sectionals. Now it's 14 teams. They're all ranked, one through 14. Every coach knows what their ranking is because they're voted and published online before they get to the draw meeting. Then you get to go wherever you choose to play. The only rule is wherever one goes, two happens to be in the other bracket. Other than that, if one goes here and two through or three through six go over here, that's fine. It doesn't matter anymore. You can choose and pick whichever site you want to go to. For example, just take the Division II very simply. It used to be played at Riverdale and at Lima Senior. There were six teams that went to each one. Well, now you can go to Riverdale or you can play at Lima Senior, whichever one you want, just so one and two end up in different places. So that's... We're still going to crown sectional champions. That's correct. We're still going to crown district champions, yes. obviously. Yep. But instead of playing in top or lower halves of brackets and, and the top half will play the lower half, now it's just one big 13 team or however many it is in yep. the district, and then we'll have one winner out of all of those. And, and just to make sure we clarify it, when the sectionals are done, when they're done at Riverdale and when they're done at Lima Senior, let's say, the four winners will be at, uh, where's the, Liberty Benton, I right. guess, for the district final then, or district semifinal and final. So they still come together for the districts, but they play in, in sections. In, through the separate sectionals. Yep. All right, good stuff. So again, Sunday night, you can watch us all break that down. We'll review all the brackets and, and hear from some coaches as well. Girls brackets came out last yep. Sunday. You can visit wohsa.org yep. and see all of them, but let's break down yep. what we find interesting <laughs> about it quickly. D4, Marion Local is the top seed, but Marion Local actually just lost to Bath on they Tuesday did. night. There's a surprise. Wildcats were down one and a 20-point win. It's a big win for Bath on the road. And Marion Local will await the winner of St. Henry Waynesfield Goshen while USV gets the winner of Ridgemont Minster on the D4 side. Watch out for Minster. I know USV is ranked in there, but watch out for Minster, and, I, and maybe perhaps New Knoxville as well, but New Min Minster plays that really good schedule. Nan Stexler does a great job. If there's a challenge in there, I would think it's going to be Minster USV. Top seed in Crestview, they defeated Salina on Tuesday night, yep. and they will get the winner of Delphus Jefferson Miller City in the Lima District. They do, and if you look out and take that a little bit farther because Crestview's probably going to be favored, then they're looking at Collider or Lipsick. And don't forget about Ottoville in that mix because Coach Kleeman does a really good job with his tournament preparation. His girls have been through the tournament before, so don't forget Ottoville. 
Moving to D3, OG, Grove, and LCC all have buys, so they'll jump right to a sectional yep. final game. Bluffton and Coldwater, that should be a good sectional yep. semi. There's a good game. Uh, you got to look at how Bluffton plays at that particular situation. The one I'm interested in is LCC and LB, Liberty Benton, when they match up. We know Liberty Benton's got this outstanding season going, but the yep. way LCC shoots the three ball, if they're on a big shooting night, they could upset Liberty Benton. LCC's been in a lot of yes, close games, have. but Liberty Benton's experienced with those two seniors and, leading the way. They've got size and they've got a perimeter scorer, and that's difficult to beat. But should they get in foul trouble, or should the fact that, that we're getting going up and down the floor and LCC's making a lot of threes and Stolle gets hot and that type of thing, it could change and go against LB, but they would be the favorites. In Division Two, Bath, a lot of local teams in the Paulding yep. District, including Bath, and they'll take on Bryan in a sectional final. And they'll be, that'll be played up at Hicksville. It is, and it's a long trip to go. And then they go to Paulding after that. If you have to look at that bracket and, and kind of looking at how those teams and their, their tradition and their history a little bit, you would guess that's going to be the one seed, Bath and Wapak matching up in the finals. I don't see a lot of upsets taking place. It could happen because some of those teams are WBL teams that are in there and you played them already. But I'll bet that's a bath Wapak district final. Yeah, it seems like we could be headed that way. But like you said, a lot of WBL and those teams are yeah, familiar right. with each other. And finally, sixth seeded Lima Senior will take on Ashland. Twelfth seed Finley will go up against Mansfield Senior. That's D1. Yep. And we're looking out for the Spartans. They've had a nice season. Rion Thompson and Amara Haynes, and, and they've done some really nice things. Yep. Well, when they can score, they're really good. They get up and down the floor in transition. They can score as a sixth seed. You can look, they could upset somebody when, as they go through this. Finley at a 12 seed, a lot more difficult because of how they're going to match up and how the bracket sheets came out. The Spartans could do something. Again, you can see the entire girls' brackets on the OHSA website. Now, let's get you set for this coming weekend. We've got a lot of games coming up. Let's run through the broadcast schedule. Mark, call out where you're going to be. Get started okay. Friday, 9 p.m., Coldwater versus Minster Girls Basketball. Good MAC matchup. Mm -hmm. Friday at 10.30 on WOSN, Miller City versus Kaleida Boys. And then Friday at 10.44 on WTLW, following the sports report, Delphus Jefferson versus Spencerville That's Boys. That's me right there. That's and a good one. I want to see, you know, how do Stockwell and how do Smith match up uh, with, with a good play that's going on at Spencerville. Big win for Spencerville last week as well in the conference play over at Crestview. I'm looking forward to that game. Yeah, it should be a good one. Mm -hmm. Four games on Saturday. Waynesfield Goshen versus Ridgemont Boys. That's at Saturday at 7.30. Saturday at 9, Finley versus Lima Senior Boys. Saturday at 10.30 on WOSN, Crestview versus Wayne Trace Boys. And that's me again. Oh, that's and a I'm going to tell you what, they, that was a one-point game, I think, when they played in a holiday tournament early on in the season. Crestview, of course, graduated so many guys. That's a great basketball game for us on, on television. Always good when, when yes, those two teams is. get together. Saturday at 10.30 on WTLW after the sports report, Spencerville versus Marion Local. Potential preview mm -hmm. of a district yes, matchup. Yes, it is. Three games Sunday, rounding out the schedule. 5.30 p.m., Collada versus Lipsick Girls. Sunday at 7, it's our, or two games, I should say. Sunday at 7 is our boys' bracket show, which you don't want to miss. And then 8 p.m., Lima Senior versus Defiance. What a way to close out the weekend. Mm -hmm. So as we get near to the tournament, hope you guys digested all of that. We, we covered a lot of ground, yep. and we'll have even more to cover next week. So thanks again to Mark Shine for joining us, and thanks to you for tuning in. We'll see you next week on Mark's Madness.